Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to make this presentation before you today. My name is Ngegu Msimanga, a pastor of Beacon of Hope Church uh, in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. I'm going to talk to you about forgiveness. Possibly, let's start by asking a question. What is forgiveness? How can we define forgiveness? In the first place, why should I forgive? What is it that really would necessitate uh, forgiveness? Why should I? Why should I? That's the question that one would ask. Isn't it uh, admitting that I am weaker? Isn't it surrendering to the other party? Isn't it uh, negating my own rights? Why can't I stand up and defend myself? Why would, should I give in and answer the question, why particularly me? Why doesn't somebody take the first in initiative to forgive? Why is it uh, going to be my responsibility? Forgiveness, what is it? As I've already mentioned, I must start by admitting that forgiveness is foreign to any human being. We cannot invent it. We can't even uh, uh, produce it on our own. We have no materials to say we are going to concoct uh, forgiveness. It is actually an act of God. Forgiveness was introduced and demonstrated by God himself. Forgiveness says you must stand up and choose to embrace the offender. It's not just a thought. They offended you. There is evidence. There is tangible uh, evidence that yes, you were offended. But forgiveness says even if there is all the evidence, everyone can admit that I was offended. But forgiveness becomes my duty to stand up, go out of my way, and embrace the offender. Yes, they have offended me, but I'm going to accept them back. I'm going to delete, uh, if it's possible, make it evaporate so that this, which stands like a wall between the two of us, has been removed. Why? Because I have forgiven the one that has offended me. A case in point, Genesis chapter 3. God has created uh, the human beings, Adam and his wife. Uh, 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 they have been told how they should conduct themselves, but they deliberately, out of choice, decide to disobey God, sin against him, uh, choose to become God's enemies, deliberately, by intention. They just go that direction. God to show that he was a forgiving God. Even if they had uh, uh, applied or stretched their hands to drag death into themselves. But what does God do? He forgives them of their sins. He suspends the immediate death that they were supposed to have. Uh, God comes down. Uh, he would have just said, look, you have done it for yourselves. I'll just leave you to suffer and bear the consequences of what you have done. But what does God do? He comes down. And, you know, Adam and his wife, they decide to go and hide. But what does God do? He searches for them. He actually calls out, Adam, where are you? He is going extra, even extra miles to reach out for these people that have offended he finds them dressed in rags. But what does he do? He dresses them up nicely. He removes all the tattered clothes, for want of a better description, and he fits new clothes onto them, showing that when you forgive somebody, you don't count finger one, finger two. You don't count I've held and I've, no, no. He goes, down he comes, he searches for them, he goes an extra mile, he dresses for them. So forgiveness is a process. You don't get tired because you are forgiven, but you keep going because it is a process. Once you start it, never 
give up. And forgiveness is very expensive. That one we should know. Very expensive. Uh, if we go back again to God himself, the one who introduced uh, forgiveness, the one who demonstrated it in the Garden of Eden, if we really look into it, it had to cost the life of Jesus. That very lamb that was killed in the garden to dress up that blood that was shed in the Garden of Eden for Mr. and Mrs. Adams, if you please, uh, to be forgiven of their sins, uh, represented the blood of Jesus Christ, who came to die and to suffer and die for people who were running away from him, for his own enemies who were actually crucifying him. And Jesus, as he was giving his dying speech, if you please, he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Look, we have come down for people. You want to rescue them out, but these people are actually biting the hand that is rescuing them. Uh, they don't have an appreciation at all. But what does Jesus say? Instead of saying, send a swarm of bees to bite them or send lions to actually tear them apart, but Jesus is here begging, just forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. I'm simply illustrating how expensive, how much it will cost you and me to forgive. It's not an easy peasy exercise whereby you just say, I'm just going to do it. And you, no, no. It would really take you to strain and take you to suffer, even to a point of bleeding. Why are you bleeding? I'm struggling because I have to forgive somebody. So Christ is demonstrating it. We are here because we are benefiting from the forgiveness that God has extended towards us. I've already told you, in a very expensive way, it is costing Jesus his cruel death in order to, 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 to demonstrate that he has forgiven us. But then he doesn't stop there. Because we have benefited from forgiveness, we are being sent to go out and forgive others. If you are living in this world like myself, there are more people who are angry against you than those who love you. There are more people who would offend you, cause you problems, than those that will just give you peace and love. So really, we are surrounded by those people who are under tension. They are looking for every opportunity to do us some wrong and offend us. But Jesus Christ is sending us on a mission of forgiveness. He even gives it uh, in the Lord's Prayer. What some other people have said, this was the Magna Carta that was given by Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 14, Christ, he teaches, he says, look, it's a condition. Because you have all sinned, you are sinners. Uh, yet God is forgiving you without an end. Therefore, take after your father. Be like God himself. People are going to offend you, but I'm sending as ambassadors to go and forgive those that offend you. In the Lord's Prayer, it is put like, yes, I'm an offender. I'm going to have or commit some sins, but I'll depend on you, God, to forgive me. But my request is, as long as I'm going to forgive others, please do forgive me. We are making it a condition. We have prayed the Lord's Prayer so many times. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I'm simply saying, as long as I've not forgiven people, God, don't waste time forgiving me. But yet I'm a sinful person. All what I do is just to sin and a sin. I really specialize in sin. I'm alive because I have a forgiving God. Sins would have deleted me, wiped me out. But because God is forgiving, I'm still here for all these years because I'm benefiting from the forgiveness that God has extended. So he says, you that have benefited from being forgiven, go and forgive your neighbors. Go and forgive your brothers. Go and forgive your parents, even your mother-in-law. 
Go and forgive them. Even those enemies that you know, there is evidence they offended you. The mission that we are being sent out to go and do is that of forgiveness. Now, when Simon Peter heard about this subject of forgiveness, he says, no, people will take advantage of me. Uh, what if I can just do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? That's long enough. I can't just keep forgiving. These guys are taking advantage of me. Surely, uh, seven times is better. Why don't I just do it that way? Uh, this is found in Matthew chapter 18, verses tw verse 21. But Jesus says, you take after your father. He says, don't even count and stop at seven when we are talking about forgiveness. He says, you can forgive countless times. So when we go out to forgive, let's not count. Let's forgive because it is our duty to do so. We would be doing what is characteristic of us as a family. Our father forgives. We are his children. We are going to forgive. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 Paul is teaching the church, he says, you should forgive one another. Let me touch another element of forgiveness. You know, we need to forgive ourselves. I don't know whether you've done something wrong. I have. I admit I have. And I find it very difficult to forgive myself. What is wrong with me? How come I did this? What on earth was wrong with me? Really, when you do something that is bad, you find it difficult to forgive yourself. But because we are talking about forgiveness, uh, yes, we have done something wrong. Of course, we spend more time doing something wrong. Let's not commit suicide. Not, we have already been given. The Lord is willing to give us a new leaf to start afresh. He is just willing to allow us to start afresh already. Whilst you are still struggling and blaming yourself, already your sins have been written off as bad debts. So let's really uh, learn to forgive ourselves. We have done something wrong, but let's forgive ourselves, take the advantage of his messes, and move forward so that we are not stuck on one point. The devil will take advantage of it. He will keep reminding you. He will keep pointing you back. He will keep just raising can you see how wicked you are? How if you are, do you think you can be forgiven? And that really makes you feel bad. But yet really, God has written it off. You don't owe him anything. You have really benefited from his uh, forgiveness. Let's take this exercise. I want to give you an exercise. Has somebody offended you? Are you cross on somebody? Remember, your sins are even worse than what somebody has, has done for you. Maybe somebody just took and uh, bent your pen. Or maybe somebody has eaten your scorn. But you've done atrocious sins, terrible, wicked things. But yet God is willing to delete that. So I'm saying, think of what people have done against you. Go and forgive them. I, I talk from experience. One bully uh, one, once came and really was rough with me and I was very angry with him and I was going to hit back. So somehow we disturbed in the process. So when our senior, our senior pastor of course, uh, tried to put us together, do you know the guy just lied with a straight face? He said he didn't do anything to me. I couldn't believe it. He's a bully. He did it just now. If there were cameras, they're going to play and show what he did. But then he sees this senior pastor, he denies. I couldn't believe it. And I was very angry. I was really very angry. But after some time, <laughs> I thought it doesn't help me. Even if I try, he's a bully. He's just going to crush me. Even if I get angry, it will not even end. So what can I do? I just said, I went, I just prayed, God, just help me. I just dissolve this anger. I, I help me just to forgive this person. Do you know, it just melted away and I felt I was free as if I was being tried. I walk in the street, I bump on this guy. 
he was really in trouble. He was shaking. He just wanted $20. He says he wanted to go, blah, blah, blah. I searched all my pockets. I knew I had money, but I had nothing. I really said, okay, remain here. I'm going to try and get some. I ran and I had forgotten this is the person I was angry against. But because of this forgiveness that had taken its process in me, I ran all over the place. By the time I came looking for him, the guy wasn't there. I met him two weeks later. I said, but I had the money. Where were you? He said, which money? What had happened? I said, come on. <laughs> you wanted some money. You were in trouble. He says, I can't remember. But really what it taught me, I had forgiven this person. I, I, for years, I was very angry. He was a bully and a liar. And he didn't mind that he was lying on a straight face. I couldn't believe it. But I tell you, I was put to test to check whether I had forgiven him. And I thank God I had done so. So I'm really saying, think of all those that people have offended you. Remember, they've offended you on a very small little thing. So it is your duty to forgive them. Because if you don't, you remain with a grudge. I don't think the kingdom of God will admit people who have grudges because we'll be not like our father because our father forgives. So it is my prayer that all of us are going to apply forgiveness and ask God to give us strength to forgive those that have offended us. Our dear father in heaven, we come before you today. There are so many people that offend us and it is very difficult to forgive them because most of them are not even sorry. Even when we walk across to try and make things right, they even take that opportunity to make it worse. And we feel like we're being taken advantage of. We pray today that since you know how to put up with people who offend and sin against you all the time, you continue giving them rain, you continue giving them uh, oxygen. Dear Father, help us to forgive those that offend us. Help us to be of good friendship with them, and help them if ever we can. Just be like you, because we pray and ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sitting in